We're here today to highlight the Swift Creek Emergency Room freestanding on Holt Street. And I have with me today the Director of Emergency Services, Shannon, and Dr. Joseph Mason here to discuss our next series called Take Care During COVID. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having us and thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm just going to go through the agenda here. Um, this is, of course, Swift Creek Emergency Room. We are on Hall Street right across from Wood Lake and directly in front of the Hobby Lobby um, store. Um, today, we're going to talk about uh, what is a freestanding emergency room? Um, why would you choose a freestanding ER? Um, our relationship with Chippenham and Johnston Willis Hospital. Um, what uh, Swift Creek and our sister facilities are doing um, during COVID for patient safety. Um, the importance of not delaying care in an emergency, signs and symptoms to look for um, for immediate emergency concerns, um, our contact information here at Swift Creek, and we'll open up um, for questions at the end. Uh, so what is a freestanding emergency room? Uh, a freestanding emergency room is a fully functioning emergency room without the ability to spend the night or be admitted to the hospital. Um, we are staffed with uh, board certified emergency physicians and nurses that are trained in both emergency nursing and pediatrics. We also have a full in-house uh, lab and radiology capabilities for x-ray, ultrasound, and uh, CAT scans. Uh, the difference between freestandings and urgent care, typically urgent care facilities can see minor infections like ear infections, sinus infections, cold, upper respiratory infections, minor burns, uh, injuries, um, like your minor accidents, uh, bicycle injuries, skateboard injuries, um, and we are here um, for anything that is more serious. Why choose a freestanding ER? So um, freestanding ERs are strategically placed in communities to be able to provide emergency care faster. Um, we have learned that in emergency time matters. Um, it's important to get the right care um, faster, whether it's um, stroke and we need to intervene or whether it's um, you know, your child fell off of a bicycle and potentially has a broken arm. We are here to at least stabilize. We can give pain medications to, to get you comfortable. Um, if it is something that we are um, not able um, to finish here, whether it, it, you need the operating room or need an admission, we take care of um, facilitating those things for you. Um, we are close to home in an emergency. Um, here at Swift Creek, as I said before, we do have the full laboratory, CAT scan, ultrasounds, x-rays. Uh, we do have telemedicine capabilities for stroke um, and behavioral health patients. Uh, we are a uh, acute stroke ready facility, meaning that we work with our sister facilities. We can provide that immediate emergent stroke care. Um, we can do CAT scans. We do have Alteplace or clot busting medications for stroke. Um, so we are able to intervene um, for those patients and stabilize prior to transport. Uh, we do have a full trauma bay um, at our facility here, so we are able to handle um, larger accidents, um, construction site. Um, really anything, just begin the initial phases of resuscitation and diagnostic imaging, which, like Shannon had mentioned, we can coordinate care with our trauma surgeons on campus. So, as Shannon mentioned, we we are a campus of Chippenham and Johnston Willis. We consider ourselves uh, an emergency department of those hospitals with just a really long hallway attached, if you will. Um, so with that, we're a, we have a, a full access to uh, our specialist uh, via telephone, via uh, telemedicine, as Shannon had mentioned. They have the ability to view all the diagnostics that we have performed here. Uh, and again, because you're getting the same physicians, physician assistants, and nurse practitioners that work at Chippenham and Johnston Willis, there's already those established relationships with all the specialists. So again, those, those ties to those specialists are already in place. 
Again, we are acute stroke ready, which means we can perform all the initial phase of diagnostics and provide clot busting medicine if indicated. Um, we can resuscitate heart attacks and complete heart block, cardiac arrest, and again, coordinate care with all the specialists up at Chippenham who can either place stents in the heart, pacemakers if needed, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of our physicians, PAs and MPs work in the pediatric emergency department at Chippenham. So again, those relationships are already in place. We are able to see patients from birth all the way up into your geriatric patients. If there's ever a question or concern about the care of a pediatric patient, we can easily bring the telemedicine capable computer into, this, into the room and have our board certified pediatric emergency medicine doctor take a look at the patient. Should you need transfer, whether it be just to see a specialist in the emergency department, to have surgery, have another procedure, or to be admitted to the hospital. We're able to arrange all that, whether it be with the specialist or the admitting doctors upstairs. We usually are able to provide our patients um, direct admission capabilities, meaning that you would be able to keep your IV in place, be able to be transferred in a controlled, monitored setting, and go straight up to your room so you wouldn't have to go back through the emergency department to be admitted. So specifically, what has Swift Creek done for COVID and COVID-related illnesses concerning our patient safety? So we have now been able to, to divide off the waiting room, if you will. We previously had a pediatric and an adult emergency waiting room. Uh, with COVID now, during this pandemic, we've separated those into a sick and a well waiting room. So initially when the patient comes in, they're greeted immediately and a series of questions are asked about why they're here, if they've had the presence of any fevers, cough, shortness of breath, they've traveled anywhere, if perhaps they've been exposed to anyone that uh, is either being tested for COVID or is tested positive for COVID. At that point, we would move them over to the sick waiting room, then they're transitioned through a, a isolated hallway to one of our sick treatment rooms. Same process for the, the quote, clean or well side. If you screen negative for those patients, you'll be escorted through the, the clean or the well waiting room down a different hallway to those set of rooms. We have a universal masking policy for all patients and visitors. If you're a patient who screens positive for cough, shortness of breath, et cetera, you'll be provided with a, a mask uh, specific to those illnesses. For visitors, and we'll get to the visitor policy in just a second. We will provide a mask for them if needed. Otherwise, we'll be able to allow them to, to wear their own face covering, as long as they're not here with a patient who is being evaluated for COVID. As far as our visitor policy goes, we are allowing for visitors, um, as long as the patient is not being evaluated for COVID. So if you're here for chest pain or abdominal pain, stroke-like symptoms, injuries, or other, you are allowed to have visitors. If we're still in the process of working through, do you have COVID or not? We are restricting the amount of visitors a patient uh, can have, uh, and really it's just the patient. Pediatric patients, of course, are allowed to have them. As far as COVID testing, we are providing COVID testing to our patients if it's indicated. Uh, there are two different tests that we are running. One is provided to patients who are being admitted to the hospital who need an urgent operation or another urgent procedure. And the results of those tests are available within 24 hours, usually within a small handful of hours. We certainly would not delay any sort of operation that you would need to get a COVID test. And we would obviously waive that lab should you need emergent intervention. The other test is provided to patients who are symptomatic or need the test, but are thankfully well enough to go home. Those tests get processed in a different manner in our send out test and are usually available two to five days from the time that they're, they're taken. So one of the things that um, we are seeing in the emergency room um, is an increase in patients that are delaying care. Uh, we are seeing patients that are coming in um, with illnesses and infections that, you know, had they been seen sooner, um, may not have felt so bad, may not have required an inpatient admission or a procedure. Um, so we want to make sure that we stress that it's important in an emergency 
um, that you not delay care, that you seek treatment um, either at an emergency room or consult your specialist or primary care doctor um, about your concerns. Uh, so, so as Shannon previously mentioned, we are a full service emergency department. We're open 24 seven. Um, and, and the reason for that is people don't plan for emergencies, right? No one schedules an emergency. We wanna be available for our patients when they need us. So with that, you know, we treat a lot of conditions that are time sensitive. They become uh, much more difficult to treat the longer you wait. You know, for example, strokes. If you're having stroke-like symptoms, whether it be difficulty speaking, numbness, weakness, et cetera, that's a time sensitive emergency. And we want you all to know that we're taking all the precautions to keep you safe during your evaluation for that. And you should certainly not delay treatment and evaluation. Same thing with chest pain. If you're having chest pain, if it is in fact your heart, time is of the essence and you need to be evaluated as soon as possible. That's not an illness that you would wanna say, I'll get that checked out tomorrow. That's a situation where you need to come on into the emergency department. We'll keep you safe and we'll get you evaluated. Certainly if you need to be admitted, we'll get that taken care of as well. Other conditions like sepsis or an infection um, that can cause a certain response in the body is much easier to be treated sooner rather than later. So if you're experiencing fevers, chills that won't go down, cough, pain when you urinate, et cetera, you would need to be evaluated as soon as So I have placed our contact information here. Um, the Swift Creek main number for our facility um, is there if you have any questions. We do have staff here um, that are able to answer any questions or concerns that you might have about presenting to the emergency room. Uh, we do get a lot of questions on a daily basis about what is the process for coming in? Like, what do I need to do? Do I need to wait in my car? Um, and the answer to that is, is no, come on in. Um, we will screen you at the door. We'll provide a mask if it's needed, um, and we'll get you, we'll direct you to the, the correct place for you to go for treatment. Um, we do have our Swift Creek um, website there that has an, a lot of COVID information. Um, there's also the Swift Creek ER COVID-19 resource hub. Uh, and I've also provided my contact information should you have any questions um, or need my assistance with anything in the department. I think at this point, we open it up to um, any questions. So I have one question here. As say I go to the Swiss Creek freestanding ED and I need to be transported to either Tippenham or Johnston Willis, what's the process for that? And will I receive multiple bills? So with, uh, here at Swift Creek, we are sister facilities um, with Chippenham and Johnston Willis. And as Dr. Mason said, we kind of consider it a long hallway. Hall Street is a long hallway to Chippenham or Johnston Willis. So if you present here and we need to transfer you for a procedure or an admission, we arrange all of that for you. We call the facility, we let them know, you know what you're coming in for. We discuss your care, discuss next options. Uh, we get uh, a bed at Chippenham or Johnston Willis. Our um, preference is that patients go directly to their floor unit. Um, so we get a bed upstairs, we call report, make sure that they don't have any questions, and then we um, get an ambulance ride to transport you to Chippenham or Johnston Willis. Same thing would happen if you presented to Chippenham or Johnston Willis emergency rooms. You would have your, your workup, your admission. We talk about um, your plan of care, and then we send you upstairs in the elevator. We just have a longer hallway. Um, because we have the same co-ID, or meaning we are all sister facilities, we are considered one hospital, three campuses. Uh, there is no additional ER or separate ER bill. It would just be the same as if you had presented to Johnston Willis or Chippenham. Um, that would be different if you requested specifically to go outside of our hospital. Um, say you, you chose to go to St. Francis or a VCU. Um, that works a little bit differently, but that is still something that we can coordinate from here. Anything else? Thank you all for joining us today.
And as Shannon shared, the contact information has been shared and we're here to help you all. And I'd like to thank Dr. Mason and Shannon for their time today as we are, they are busy working and seeing patients here in the emergency room. And thank you all for your time today to learn more about the services provided by Swift Creek and HCA. Have a great day. Bye guys.